it fully praise that fancy loves I praise and love that child whose heart no thought whose tongue no word whose hand no deed defiled I praise him most I love him best oh praise and love him In him I live and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, land's highest theme, man's most desired light. To love him life, to leave him death, to live in him delight. Seed to other due. First friend he was, best friend he is, all times will try him true. Though young yet wise, though small yet strong, though man yet God he is, as wise he knows, as strong. He can, as God he loves to bless. His knowledge rules, his strength defends, his love doth cherish all. His birth our joy, his life our light, his death our end of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Well, today is the 25th of June. It's the feast on the universal calendar of St. William. On the particular calendar of our congregation, it's the Feast of the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus. And in a way, over it all, today is Little Christmas when we celebrate on the 25th of every month the Nativity of our Lord in the stable of Bethlehem. The first hour of our broadcast is for notices. 
and rosary preparation for Holy Mass. The second hour is for Holy Mass and Thanksgiving, and the third hour is for devotions. More about that in a moment. We're broadcasting especially to the Diocese of Aberdeen in Scotland, Wyoming, Colorado, Indiana, the British Virgin Islands, Mumbai in India, and Christchurch in New Zealand, all people who have contacted us to say that they are watching and uh, appreciate especially the Holy Rosary. Well, my dear soul, our Lord tells us in the Holy Gospel that unless you become as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That is why St. Alphonsus gave us a special devotion to the infant Jesus. With the infant Jesus, we have the virtues uh, exemplified of simplicity, childlike simplicity, which we have, to, we have to acquire during the course of our adult lives. We have to become simple and, uh, in the holy sense of the word, childlike in our simplicity, without being childish, but childlike. Purity, virtue of chastity, is exemplified in the infant Jesus. Childlike purity. Innocence is a, such a virtue for today where it is being uh, assailed on all sides, especially through the internet. The next virtue of the infant Jesus is obedience. He became obedient even unto the death of the cross. And finally, we find from the infant Jesus the virtue of humility when God uh, became a man. And a child is always in a humble position. So, so we have every month the devotions in honor of the infant Jesus called the 25th Devotions or Little Christmas. You will hear us speak often enough if you listen very often, uh, about the infant Jesus. Um, that's because he's part of our life. The infant Jesus uh, has been uh, part of our monastic life uh, since the beginning, when we started in 1988. It's been the, at the beginning of the Redemptorist spirituality, since the time of Bishop Falcoya. We have here uh, recently translated a, a letter of Bishop Falcoya uh, to Father Sportelli. Uh, I'm sorry, Fa Father Sportelli writing about Father Bishop Falcoya, who was on his deathbed. This is in the, uh, the, 18, uh, the 1730s. And Bishop Falcoya is indicating that part of the congregation spirit is to have a devotion on the 25th of the month to the infant Jesus. Well, we had today our procession in his honour, and I thought to show you some of the pictures of the procession uh, as, a, as by way of a notice, so you can see a little bit uh, about how we celebrated the infant Jesus. This is the statue here that we take in procession. Well, it's the infant of Prague. He always has, usually, uh, we took them off for the procession in case he lost them. He always has his little rosary, the rosary of the infant Jesus, uh, just, uh, and uh, the his little ring. Somebody always seems to give him a ring wherever he goes. We have a statue in, in New Zealand and that has a ring and another statue in Christchurch is the one at Mount St. Joseph's has a ring. This is a diamond ring so he didn't want to lose it. Somebody gave a ring to put on his finger and he always carries the little chaplet and uh, we take this statue in procession around the monastery which I'm going to show you in a few moments. And from the beginning we've always had great uh, help and providence from the infant Jesus. Whenever we've been in need, we've always turned to him, and he has always helped us. I remember one time when we just had no money at all, and uh, Father came to me and said, well, we've, we, we, what are we going to do about cash? We need heating. And I said, well, where is the infant Jesus? Oh, the infant Jesus was up in the attic. <laughs> so that's no place for the infant Jesus. So we brought him down and put him in, in the chapel and began our novena in honour of divine infancy. And within about a day, we had somebody ring up who had offered us sufficient funds to put in a heating plant. So kind. And we thank the person involved, of course, but we thank especially the infant Jesus because we know these things come through him. The more you honour me, the more I will bless you. And so every month we have this little procession around the monastery, which 
uh, today was a beautiful day uh, with a nice sun, which you don't have all the time. Sometimes we do this in the rain, but it was very nice, and I'll show you now the photos. The procession begins in the chapel of Our Lady of, Our Lady of Casilibus. Here you see uh, our chapel. You can see the pillar there of Our Blessed Lady of Fatima right out in the middle of the choir. And she, as it were, stands at the head of her troops. We are her troops, we hope. At least that's what we want to be. On the back wall there you can see one picture is not very clear. It's uh, rather, uh, but that's of Mother of Perpetual Succor. And to the right of the crucifix on the top wall there you can just see the image of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Below that there is a statue of Saint Alphonsus. And we've got yet to get another podium, but the podium for the Sacred Heart it holds him up quite high, which he should be anyway, and that's the Sacred Heart there. And then coming forward, we have the statue there of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, where we can burn our votive candles. And on the opposite side, as you'll see in a moment, there is the image of the uh, our Lord, bound and captive, standing with the crown of thorns. Mm -mm. Seems a little bit of a problem here. Hold on. Ah. So it begins at 12 o'clock with the ringing of the Angelus bell. So there's our, our bell tower and uh, the bells are ringing well. There you can see just in front of the tabernacle of the high altar there the same statue that has been on the table here of the infant Jesus. And you can see a better sight also of Our Lady's pillar it's in the middle of the choir. The beautiful stations of the cross as you can see high on the wall there uh, they came to us from Belgium from a monastery that closed down. Most of our items are uh, from monasteries that have closed down, including that altar. It's a very beautiful altar. It was with a Franciscan order uh, of sisters that closed down. It hasn't got a, a correct altar stone in it because it was in their upstairs chapel, a, a rather big school, I believe. It was a beautiful, beautiful altar, and including also the, the marble steps there, also taken from the same monastery that was closing down. The infant Jesus is there right in front of the tabernacle. It's an enormous tabernacle. In fact, behind the doors of the tabernacle is a monstrance. And it takes a, a whole monstrance to be fitted into that tabernacle. It's Father Magdala who's kneeling there at the foot of the altar and at the foot of the statue of the infant Jesus. Another view. A better view of our Lord bound and in his crown of thorns on the epistle side of the altar there. And a nice view also of Our Lady's Pillar. I was reading the prayers to the infant Jesus. The procession is set off at the stage. It's coming down the steps towards our what we call the Via Paparum, the way of all the old father monks who used to live on this island the papari, so we call it the via paparum. And there's 12 steps in the staircase there. It used to be just a, a bank, but uh, we made it into a beautiful staircase. And atop the arch there, you can't quite see it very clear because today there's quite a bit of fog, but there's a beautiful statue of the infant Jesus that in a storm had been swiped right off there by a, a flying roof. Uh, such was a storm, and the baby Jesus was badly broken, but Thanks to Brother Romuald, it's been all fixed up. And uh, two months ago, he was replaced uh, on the top of the 
of the uh, of the arch there. On this side of this arch, this wall, is the what we call our Pilgrim's Court, which has four cells for those who wish to make retreats here. Uh, at this stage, it's only for men because it's uh, right in with it's just a small division between our cells and the cells of our, our male guests. Here are two beautiful angels, and we'll have this uh, wall here with the arch, and it will be one day made nice and white and uh, more beautiful than it is now, but still. It's a, it's a lovely arch and it's got a lovely heavy door on it. Here the procession is leaving and going down past our cells. In the middle of the greenery there, there are enormous rose bushes, uh, the wild rose, the rose of Rigosa. It grows well here in Orkney. It's about the only bush that really can survive the, uh, the salt-laden wind. It, uh, I saw them a few months ago and I thought, goodness, I, I don't think they'll even come away again this, this, uh, this spring. But no, beautiful and big. And, and one of them is even a bird has a nest. As we're making this procession in honor of the infant Jesus, we are uh, saying the prayer in reparation to the holy face of Jesus. Twelve times. Right to the end of the Via Paparum and then coming back to the other side. That's the community bell you can see that rings the, the different exercises of the day. The procession is being led by Brother Edmund Maria from Kansas. Edmund Maria made his final vows uh, last summer. This is taken from above the staircase, waiting on the brothers to come through the arch. The bell is ringing now for the community rosary and we'll be saying our rosary in about 15 minutes. So yes, these cells here that you can see on this side of the arch, uh, uh, this is where our, our guests uh, come and stay while they're here with us. And the community is on the other side of that arched wall. The chapel you saw before is here, you can see it here on the right, That's the, it was an old barn that we did up and as brothers just about to walk past now, the kitchen, which was the old tractor implement shed on the island when we came here. Here he comes, the king is coming. So that's our refectory behind there. And this old wall is something we built ourselves. It's pretty rugged, but it keeps the wind off. You see the big bush here, it's a Hebe. Uh, we actually got it fairly big. Uh, and they've, uh, they've, they've done well because uh, the, the wind is such that whichever way the wind is coming, it's a bit 
bare, but uh, it looks pretty good at the moment. Brother Nicodemus is reading out the prayers today. After the 12 invocations to the Holy Face, we have the third sorrowful mystery of the Rosary, uh, when our Lord as King is being mocked. So we say that particular decade so as to affirm that he is truly our King, and no mockery about it. Held aloft by Father Magda, the rector of the monastery, Father just celebrated recently his seventh anniversary of priesthood. So as you can see, this is a procession which is carried out with quite a lot of uh, innocent simplicity, I think. It's not terribly regimented, but it's uh, taking our blessed Lord around our monastery and confiding everything to him. Moving down now towards the pier. The boat, the St. Alphonsus, has just been hauled up. It needs an overhaul, as you can see, and it uh, has already had a fair amount done on it last uh, summer. There's a bit more to be done this year has to come out of the water every now and again. As you can see out there, that's the, the water, but there's a lot of fog today because yesterday was a lovely sunny day, so the sunny day is often followed by fog here. On the archway we have closest to us St. John the Baptist holding aloft the cross, and on the other side our Holy Father St. Alphonsus, and just above the arch in the middle uh, an image of our mother of perpetual succor. Here comes the procession out onto our pier. These uh, three altars on the side are also a great defence against the wind because it keeps, uh, gives us a sheltered harbour from that particular direction of wind, which is the southeast. The boat in the water is our monastery boat that has been having an overhaul and a paint up as well this summer. procession is turning now to return to the chapel of Our Lady of Casilibus. There's our library. Well, it looked like a white elephant for, for, for a long time, but it's nearly completely full of books, which we can look at at some other time. And there's a statue of St. Bridget of Ireland, the Archvirgin, as she is called, of Ireland. And her uh, chapel had been on this island from very ancient times. Uh, the, there's no sight, of it, no sight of it anymore, but it was here, and it's marked on all the old maps. There's the statue of St. Michael in the little shrine there halfway along the wall. And it's the farmhouse behind it where we have our monastery common room. And up on the top of the, the floor, the, it's really a middle floor, the first floor up is where we have the uh, washing machine and our 
common laundry. You can see the stone here in the foreground on the grass. It's on the angle. It really seems to have been probably a, what at one time a, a stone cross. I'll show you it's a bit broken. Because it was normal to put a high cross or some kind of a cross in front of a holy place and in just on the other side of the wall is where the, the chapel of St. Bridget was. It does look like it's been broken. You can't say it was a cross. We don't know for sure. But there's a good chance that's a stone that goes well deep into the ground and has been there for a very, very long time. It would seem that it was probably a, a cross. There are three other stones like this at other places uh, where there were holy sites. So here is the procession returning now. There's a stone I was speaking about there just on the on the facing on the on the right. A beautiful footpath as well as the shrine was built by the brothers but mostly by Brother Nicodemus. It's a beautiful shrine and inside that shrine is a small statue of Saint Michael. There's the monastery kitchen garden, potatoes, radishes and the procession coming up. On this other side, this other green field there, we want to make that into a basically a rosary in honor of Our Lady's Assumption and eventually we hope to put a, a shrine there in honor of the Assumption of Our Blessed Lady. Fill the whole paddock up with beautiful roses. Here comes the little king. Around the courtyard, the blue door straight in front. We call it St. Bridget's uh, Goose House. There were geese in it once, but now it's a place where we have our, our hens and they lay eggs, plenty of eggs, every day. In the middle of this little courtyard here is Our Lady of Sorrows. These are the heavy bushes in front. Yes, and the door and the window there to the kitchen. We make this. We make a procession around this little inner court after our meals usually uh, to make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. You can see the planks that are down, that's because there's a project afoot now to uh, put down a concrete path here, put down a, a concrete this floor in and eventually put a roof on this little bit of a building, please God. Back into the chapel. Final prayers to the infant Jesus and an incensing. You can see the pictures there quite clearly of Mother Perpetual Sucker and the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus whose feast it is today. Here's where we're going to put in the concrete tomorrow. And all who took part before our Lord has returned to his cell. So I hope that that has given you some insight into this little devotion we have each month and now we will prepare ourselves for Mass with the Holy Rosary. Today, the Joyful Mysteries.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I unite with all the saints in heaven, with all the just on earth, with all the faithful here present. I unite with thee, O my Jesus, in order to praise thy Holy Mother worthily, and to praise thee in her and through her. I renounce all distractions which may arise during this rosary. I desire to say it with attention.